This right here is the new 16 inch MacBook Pro, which you can configure with either the new M1 Pro chip or the M1 Max chip. My first impression of this laptop is that it's kind of heavy and chunky, which is something that MacBooks are now known for. They are usually this very thin and light laptop. It's almost like a priority when it comes to the making of this MacBook. Well, it kind of looks like Apple has finally set their priority straight and made a true Pro machine. And that comes with a lot of advantages. And one of them being that it has a better heat management. In fact, there are three massive air vents on the new MacBook, one on each side and one massive one split into three under the display you know what else the thickness also allows for ports now for years apple has only been including usb-c ports on the macbooks well let's just say it wasn't the best experience but on the new macbooks there are now a lot of ports let's take a moment to welcome back the massive ports i really love the massive ports on the same side we also get two usb4 ports for file transfer external display and they can also still be used for charging on the same side we also get an eye independence headphone jack i'm not an audiophile but basically there are headphones out there that requires more power to get the best volume and sound quality out of them. I don't own an headphone like that, but if you do, that's gonna be a good thing. Well, on the other side, we get a full-size HDMI 2.0 and we get an SD card reader, finally. I hate dongles. From a design standpoint, these new MacBooks are built like a tank. It's a solid aluminum chassis. Even the display feels solid. It's thicker than usual, which I really love because MacBook displays always feel very fragile to me. It's now a mini LED display unlike the conventional LCD Apple used to use. And this display is next level. It's able to reach peak brightness of 1600 nits. The display is almost 4K with ProMotion and guess what? It's now a 10-bit panel. Now, all this features makes it great for a lot of things. First of all, great visibility outdoor because of the insane brightness. The UI is just feels very smooth thanks to the ProMotion which you can actually toggle off to save battery if you want and the 10-bit panel makes it great for smooth gradation and most people won't be able to tell the difference between this display and the regular 8-bit display that we are all used to but the thing is that this laptop was not built for everybody in the first place now all these great things i've said about this display yes your eyes is not playing tricks on you that is a notch right there Apple, are you having a laugh? Well, to be honest, it doesn't really bother me while I'm actually using the laptop. And for the most part, it's usually blacked out along with the menu options at the top. So it kind of looks like it's not actually there, but it's actually there. I mean, I mean, it just doesn't make sense for it to be there because it only houses the front facing camera, which happens to be very nice. It's now 1080p on like the 720p gobbledygook excuse of a front facing camera we used to get on the MacBook. The keyboard on the new MacBook Pro is a magic keyboard, whatever that means. It's not actually new, but it kind of feels new. The keys now have a deeper travel. Thank Thanks to the thickness of the MacBook itself. I really, really love it because it kind of feels like a mini mechanical keyboard. The touch bar is gone though and the functional keys are back. RIP. SMH. SMH. The touchpad on the new 16-inch MacBook Pro is massive. Like you can actually fit a whole iPhone 13 Pro Max into it. What really surprises me about it is that it's actually very good at palm rejection because there's no way you can avoid resting your palm on it while typing or editing videos or pretty much doing anything. That's how big it is. I'm really, really impressed. Just like the way I'm impressed with the speakers on the new 16-inch MacBook Pro, they sound incredible. Incredible bass, incredible clarity. In fact, this is what it sounds like. Yes. It's really impressive stuff. Now, let's ask the main question. How does it perform? Well, both the M1 Pro and the M1 Max were built for work. Obviously, the M1 Max being the highest end performer, it literally doubles the number of the M1 Pro on the spec sheet. I just feel like the M1 Max cast a very big shadow on the M1 Pro. So I decided to go for the M1 Pro. From my experience with the M1 Pro so far, I edit 4K videos up to 4K 120 frames per second with my Sony A7S III, both compressed and uncompressed. And the handling of this file has been pretty much smooth. I really do not have any complaint. I I do notice a slight improvement on how the M1 Pro actually handles the 4K compressed version because the M1 used to struggle with that a little bit. And I also notice a smoother playback when I add multiple layers of graphics on top of the 4K layers. So the M1 Pro is pretty much great for handling 4K footage. But where I see the most improvement is in my export time. The M1 Pro pretty much cuts my export time by more than half, which is really, really impressive. Unfortunately, I don't have my M1 MacBook Pro to do a side-by-side -side comparison with my new 16-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. But guys, trust me. This is really, really impressive stuff going on here. But I really wanted to see how powerful the M1 Pro actually is. So I downloaded some 8K RAW 3D file from Red's website to really see how powerful the M1 Pro actually is. So 
I put the ASK video on my timeline and guys, I could pretty much put the cursor on any spot on my timeline and hit play and I do not notice any significant lag. That is insane. Mind you, 8K is four times the resolution of 4K. I don't edit 8K yet, but that is promising. Now, when I say I'm glad I didn't get the MO Max, I'm actually glad I didn't get the MO Max. Now, there's something called diminishing return, a principle that states that the benefits gained from something will represent a proportionally smaller gain as more money is invested in it. If I actually spent more money on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the performance improvement won't really matter much to me since the M1 Pro is actually overkill for me in the first place. And that's where the old diminishing return actually comes in. For the most part, if you're not doing some high level projects like Hollywood stuff, you don't really need the M1 Max. Now, the battery on this MacBook is, um, insane i can easily call it a two day plus battery on normal use of course and by normal use i mean like typing documents you know listening to music browsing the internet on safari and all that stuff no light use you can easily get pretty much three days but on heavy use i mean like editing 4k videos like i do i pretty much get around five maybe eight hours if I reduce the brightness of the display, but the battery is really, really impressive. The new 16 inch MacBook Pro actually comes with this massive 140 watt brick, which actually charges the laptop 50% in less than 30 minutes. <sighs> really really fast stuff now are the new macbooks actually worth the price because they are no small money for the most part i would still recommend the original m1 macbook pro and m1 macbook Air to most people because those macbooks are more than capable in fact the main reason why i upgraded to the m1 pro 16 inch macbook pro is that the display on my m1 macbook pro actually broke so i had a choice the choice to either repair the display or go for a bigger display because i've always wanted a bigger display because i love the m1 marble pro but the 13 inch display wasn't the best for me i just prefer a bigger display this is probably my favorite tech that i bought in 2021 it's really really great i mean it's still expensive like really really expensive but i love it to pieces anyways thanks for watching my name is 11 and i'll see you guys in my next video adios One, two, three, let's go.